In 1975, the Englishman Graham Russell and the Australian Russell Hitchcock decided to team up to sing songs that many generations love. In almost five decades, they created more than 40 singles, 11 of which reached number one on the Billboard charts. Can you imagine wedding parties, ballads and proms without hits like Making Love Out of Nothing at All and All Out of Love? Keep watching the video to learn what happened to the famous Australian duo Air Supply. Graham Russell and Russell Hitchcock's meeting on May 12, 1975, during a production of the musical Jesus Christ Superstar in Sydney, Australia, was the beginning of a long friendship. During rehearsals, they realized that their voices matched perfectly. Both began to perform in coffee shops, restaurants and nightclubs, only with vocals and guitar. They quickly gained a reputation for musical quality thanks to Russell's voice, his excellent vocal harmonies and the original songs Graham wrote specially for the duo. During an interview with Unlocking Connecticut in March 2018, Hitchcock was asked what the key to such a lasting friendship is. His English, I'm Australian, same kind of background, working class upbringing, we both saw the Beatles, I saw them in 64 in Australia, he saw them in 63 in England, and we're both Beatles fanatics. We have the same sense of humor, the same interest in movies, everything is pretty much like my twin brother. With the help of the pianist Frank Asler Smith, they recorded some demos on cassette tape. After showing their songs to the main labels, they were rejected for all of them, except for one, CBS Records, which admired their unique style and offered them a contract. In one afternoon, Graham and Russell recorded a single that reached number one on the Australian charts and thus, Air Supply was born, a name taken from a dream of Graham's. The duo was given the opportunity to open Rod Stewart's show shortly after the success of the first single and were invited to join his US and Canadian tour, giving S. Supply their first chance to perform in the US. However, they failed to establish themselves in the American market and returned to Australia, where they ended up forgotten and had to start over from scratch. However, after releasing the album Life Support, with hits like Lost in Love, they were noticed by Clive Davis, president of the North American label Arista Records, who offered them a recording contract. In 1980, Lost in Love was re-recorded for an album of the same name in the United States, becoming the best-selling single in the world and reaching number one on the charts, marking the beginning of the duo's successful journey, with the second single All Out of Love, reaching the charts top even faster. I'm Air Supply achieved an incredible mark, matching the Beatles' performance with seven consecutive top five singles. Their follow-up albums, The One That You Love, Now and Forever, and The Greatest Hits sold over 20 million copies. According to the IMDb website, Air Supply won the American Music Award for Favorite Pop Rock Duo in 1982. In the same year, they released Now and Forever, which features songs such as the title track Now and Forever, Even the Nights Are Better, and Two Less Lonely People in the World. Lost in Love was named Song of the Year in 1980. In 1983, Making Love Out of Nothing at All, written by Jim Stamen, solidified the duo as an important part of music history. This single was included on the album The Greatest Hits, which sold 7 million copies in the US alone. Their hits also reached millions of radio plays. The duo began touring with fancy productions and became well-known in South America and Southeast Asia, reaching number one on the charts in many countries. In 1988, they were invited to perform for the Royals, Prince Charles and Princess Diana, who they found to be enthusiastic fans. In the 80s, they released other hits like I Can't Wait Forever from 1984, Power of Love from 1985, Lonely Is the Night and One More Chance from 1986. 
Later, they released the album The Vanishing Race, which included songs like Goodbye and It's Never Too Late. Between 1987 and 1990, the duo stopped recording. Hitchcock released a solo album, Russell Hitchcock, and the single Swear to Your Heart. Meanwhile, Russell devoted himself to writing, bringing to life the ideas he had harbored since childhood. Despite their individual efforts, fans were happy to know that in 1991, both were back together, releasing the album The Earth Is and the single Without You. With the continued success of their singles and albums, Air Supply managed to stay at the top of the charts and their live performances have held audiences around the world fascinated. Graham Russell and Russell Hitchcock are inseparable, that's a fact. Today, more than 40 years after they became friends, the two continue to tour together, thrilling their fans around the world with fabulous shows. In an interview with the Chicago Tribune in 2018, Russell said, Actually, we work a lot. We still do about 120 to 130 shows a year around the world. We've always considered ourselves a touring band, and that's what we do. In their early air supply days, the duo played wherever they could. Love and Other Bruises, the song that would become a hit on Australian radio in 1975, was the starting point for both their successful careers. As they played their acoustic version of the song in small shops, the positive reaction from the public led them to record the song as Air Supply, but kept their true identity a secret due to contracts for the music called Jesus Christ Superstar. So, when the duo finally released their debut album, Air Supply's career took off, taking them from small club gigs to their first outdoor gig. According to an article on the Daily Breeze website on July 29, 2010, Graham Russell gave more details about the beginning of it all. We were on Jesus Superstar and contractually couldn't promote ourselves, so we couldn't say we were on air supply until we left the show. We left the show on a Saturday when it ended, and on Monday morning we were in the studio to record our first record. It took us five days to record, we came out two weeks later and went straight to number one and our career was launched. Our first show as Air Supply was New Year's Eve in 1976. We played to 90,000 people on the steps of the Opera House in Sydney. It was bizarre. In the same article, Graham reveals that the loss of his mother to cancer at the age of 10 affected him deeply. He was shocked and unable to speak for three months. He found comfort in writing poetry and songs, using rhymes and playing the guitar as a form of emotional expression and eventually overcoming the trauma. The musician also mentioned that the loss of his mother was traumatic for his father, and he believes it was one of the reasons why his family emigrated from England to Australia. At the last minute, we were leaving the next morning. I ran away from home. I was 14 and I never saw my dad again until I went to Australia five years after that. But that was fine with me. I wanted to be alone and do my own thing. I went to live with my mother's brother. Pursuing his passion for music, Graham immersed himself in the Australian music scene. Deciding to move forward with just his guitar, he worked and participated in many television shows, and dedicating himself to composing his own songs. It was then that he auditioned for and got a job in the choir of an Australian production of the music Jesus Christ Superstar, and on the first day he met another member, Russell Hitchcock. I always had my guitar and played my songs between shows and at halftime. He would join in and learn the songs, and then we started doing shows together, just in cafes and folk clubs. People would come up to us after we played and say, wow, you guys sound great together. Russell Hitchcock, in turn, born in Australia in 1949, never had ambitions to be a singer. Growing up in Brunswick, a suburb of Melbourne, he experienced constant changes of residence during his childhood. After turning 20, Russell took a job in a computer company and worked there for three years before being promoted and transferred to Sydney. 
It was there that he was convinced by his girlfriend to audition for a stage play, where he met Graham, and the rest is history. Russell Hitchcock is currently 73 years old, and Graham Russell is 72 years old. The duo has been touring since 1975, when they started their career, and they don't pretend stopping. In 2005, they celebrated 30 years of success with the release of the DVD It Was 30 Years Ago Today, and the record setting concert in front of 175,000 people in Cuba. In the same year, they released The Singer and the Song, an acoustic album of many of their greatest hits that was critically acclaimed. In 2010, Mumbo Jumbo was also praised and gained a feature article in Billboard magazine. As Air Supply soft rock love songs are known worldwide, they have sung soundtracks for many movies and television. More recently, the song All Out of Love was featured in the movie That Boo Chu, starring Ryan Reynolds. Their songs have also been featured on numerous other well-known Hollywood projects, including 1984's Ghostbusters, The Dukes of Hazzard, and Mr. and Mrs. Smith from 2005, and The Perks of Being a Wallflower from 2012. Ask Adonis if there has ever been a disagreement between him and Graham, bearing in mind that they spent so much time together. Russell Hitchcock had to think a bit. Probably about where to eat, he said, adding with a laugh, because he's vegetarian. The truth is that Russell never wanted to write songs, and Graham has already stated that he never wanted to be the lead singer, so there is no competition between them. This is the formula of a 47-year partnership. Never having fought in all that time is a true proof of respect, passion and love they have for Air Supply, and to the delight of their fans, their journey continues. For more content like this, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. There's a new video every week. Thank you so much and I see you in the next video.